Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Service Now 911. In the series of Meet Expert, today we have a special guest. He is nine times Service Now MVP and sharing his immense knowledge throughout the community via various articles, LinkedIn posts, podcasts, videos, and there are a number of sources. For today's episode, we picked up topics which are very, very special and discussed very rarely throughout the community. Yes, so without any delay, let's welcome the expert of service now, Mr. Mark. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining. Uh, I'm very much excited to have you on board and uh, I once again welcome you here. So can you please start a bit of your introduction? Uh, though many people know you, but just uh, just for, you know, starting introduction. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, you reached out to me and uh, yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's uh, have a session. Uh, always fun and to share knowledge and, and insights or experiences gained. So uh, yeah. it's just finding a, finding a good uh, moment in time and a, and a good subject. But uh, yeah, here we are. Um, yeah, and really shortly about myself, uh, Mark Rudolf, uh, live in the Netherlands um, now, into service now for almost uh, eight years. Um, yeah, and I think my, my bio, bio uh, says that I'm a private pilot, I'm a former basketball coach. And okay. I'm a nine-time MVP. <laughs> yes. So that's really, really short. Uh, I can tell a lot more, but um, uh, I think uh, uh, there are some good recordings already out there, like like the Titans of Now that that uh, Robert Federick did with me, or uh, uh, podcasts like uh, like Laten we Praten from uh, Ashutosh Munot uh, and Dhruv Gupta. I think Ashutosh was recently also um, uh, on a session yeah. with you. Yeah, uh, I had I had a discussion with with Ashutosh yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, that was really nice. Yeah, great. So, yeah, great. that's uh, that's in uh, in short about me. That's great. Thank you so much for introducing yourself. And uh, now, can, can you please see, uh, share the agenda? Uh, I should be sharing the screen now. Yes, it is there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I want to share is. Um, um, yeah, something about uh, uh, upgrade in a week. Uh, it's uh, it's a journey that I was uh, part of uh, at a, at a customer recently. Um, yeah, we we upgraded to the Washington release, and uh, we actually did that in one week. And, Great. Um, yeah, that that is something. It's a really short timeline, and if you look at the responses um, on social media, etc. And one week is, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's exciting. Um, so, uh, being a service now person in my career of eight to ten years, uh, I have never seen upgrade more than you know less than two months. So you are saying uh, one week, so it's uh, really commendable. So I'm excited yeah. to uh, learn about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, going to share a bit about um, uh, the landscape of that customer, a bit about that journey. But eventually, what I really want to do also is show some things on, on screen uh, using an instance to show uh, in-platform features uh, that you can use and which are really helpful. Um, because I think that would be uh, would be really nice. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, let's just uh, proceed. Um, yeah, family releases. Um, yeah, it's something every customer has to deal with, right? Um, if you like yeah. it or not, at least once you a have year. To do it. Yeah, hopefully twice a year. Um, but yeah, every customer, um, yeah, will will face this at, at so some moment in time. Um, yeah, and this is the road that we are. Heading right um, okay. from the Washington DC up to the next uh, upcoming um, yeah releases. Uh, what the naming convention will be in 2026? Who knows? Um, <laughs> let's see. I, I did see a lot of uh, suggestions on LinkedIn community, etc. But those are all speculation. We don't we don't really know. What come after um, that? <laughs> I have I really have no clue. I really <laughs> have no clue. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, that's uh, just where uh, where we are heading. Um, it's also really up to the customers, right? If they adopt a new release immediately, like the Washington release, and that you uh, immediately jump onto patch one or a later patch, or that you just stay one release behind. Uh, and for some customers, uh, because it really depends on your contract also, some customers can even be two releases uh, behind. Um, yeah, and then apart from the family releases, what's not here on screen, um, we've got uh, store releases. Uh, Surf now is actually moving more and more to the store. Okay. Uh, and also existing applications are moved uh, to the store. Uh, it has some advantages, like, you know, those store applications, you can upgrade them anytime. Uh, there's less impact. It's easier to test. Uh, and in most cases, and that's really interesting, it's backwards compatible. Okay. Uh, so you don't have to wait for the next uh, release. That's in most cases, uh, it's like that. Um, yeah, and I already briefly mentioned it, right? It's really up to, to the customer if they immediately adopt a new release or wait a few patches or are even a, a release behind. Uh, but for me, reasons to stay current are things like getting the latest platform and security enhancements, um, having access to new products and features, uh, but also important, keeping your 24-7 uh, support. Okay. Yeah, and then um, let's have a look uh, at the upgrade uh, in a week. Um, it's definitely not new or unique, but you don't see it that often. Uh, I have done upgrades before in one week, but that was at way smaller customers because now it was at one of the larger uh, financial companies in the Netherlands. Okay. And, um, yeah. Here's a bit how their landscape is. Uh, they've got six, six instances. Well, most of the times a bit more uh, because of temporary instances for backups, restores, whatever. But usually they have six instances. Uh, the production uh, database footprint is seven terabytes. That's already after working on the database footprint, because if I wouldn't have done that, it would now probably be about 14 or 15 terabytes. Um, there are about 35 developers involved, almost 300 ATF tests active, uh, almost 750 instance scan checks. Okay. Um, yeah, and all kinds of things uh, happening there, the normal ITSM, uh, ITOM, GSC, uh, HR, uh, Software Asset Management Pro, etc. So, um, yeah. So it's uh, a very mature customer with respect to service now. Uh, um, in a lot of cases, yes. Obviously, I'm now at the customer, so you also see some things that are not so mature. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, uh, it's, uh, it's a serious customer, a big customer. Uh, and uh, also security is on a pretty pretty high level, so uh, that's uh, that's pretty pretty nice to to see. Okay. And it's a, this is a bit about um, yeah the, the 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 landscape of that customer. Yeah, and then if you look high level at the activities involved of of the upgrade, uh, well, first some things of before the upgrade. Um, I listed some. Uh, or, activities here, maybe uh, you have more activities that are involved. That's definitely possible. This is, this is not an extensive uh, uh, list. Okay. Uh, but for me, and also for this customer, um, the most ideal situation if you, uh, are you, if you are before the upgrade, that you are already upgrading an actual instance, a sub-production instance that you have available, like a demo instance or a sandbox, and that you are already really upgrading it. And then you already see like, hey, how long is the upgrade taking? Um, you can already start your ATF, so your instance can, and are there issues popping up? You can do checks on known issues from, from before. Uh, and you can also just do that anytime, so there's no real time time pressure to do that. Okay. If that's not possible, because not every customer has an extra instance available, uh, then you can use uh, upgrade preview. I will also show that uh, in the demo. Uh, but okay. the most ideal situation would be to already upgrade 
one instance. So yeah, you really see what's happening. Um, and I must say, I've also been at customers where they had only two instances. Okay, then it's not possible to do that. To do that, but even for customers that only have three instances, like a dev, test, and production, why not just upgrade that test instance on a Friday and then clone it back in the weekend? Then only for one day you're losing that test environment because you're temporarily upgrading it, right? So. Customers not having that money in that ma many instances, I don't really see that as an objection or uh, or an or an issue. Um, on the so bottom in your of this case, list, you did it for test. Excuse me. Uh, in your case, uh, you did uh, for test. Yeah, we did actually the sandbox instance, I think. Um, okay. But that was just because there were two uh, instances extra uh, available um so yeah um okay. on the bottom of this list is communication and actually that is i think the most important part of the whole uh upgrade and especially if, if you're talking about upgrading in one week uh the communication do that well in advance set the the tone set the expectations uh but also who is involved so you know uh, communicate that on time uh, because it's so yeah, so important. It's, uh, I think that's the key factor in, uh, in the whole account. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, the week of upgrade. Way more activities, of course. Um, uh, but these are the, the main points, I think. Uh, good to know for this customer, um, the upgrades usually took like three or four weeks. Now it's one week. Before, okay. there was also one week of development freeze, and this time there was no freeze at all. Um, because, yeah, I showed like there are about 35 developers involved uh, for this customer. Not all of those 35 are obviously working on the upgrade. So right. some of them could just work on with their normal uh, activities, so they could just develop. Um, there was a release freeze so nothing was going to be released to production that week but the normal development was still uh, happening okay so are we skipping anything uh if i compare this uh, one week upgrade to uh you know four month three month upgrade so are we sk skipping anything here no no i don't think so um, okay great i think a really big difference is what i also saw at different customers or also this customer in the past, then we would say like, uh, we would communicate, you can test in these two, two, two weeks. That is what we are communicating to stakeholders. But the stakeholders really need to test for two weeks. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's not the case. And what actually really happens, some stakeholders are testing on the first day and are already done. And some stakeholders will even wait until the last day Mm, and right. yeah, then they're done. So why do we need two, two weeks for that? Right, and that's right. the same for uh, handling the skip records uh, and for the, 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 the several service now teams involved. Um, usually we would say, oh, we've got one full week to handle those skip records. But that's actually also the same. Some of the teams will start on the first day. Some will start on the last day. Um, right. Yeah, why can't we just say this is the day or these are the two days that you have to do that. Um, and that's definitely possible. Only the key thing is communicate that well in advance, because if you're communicating that two or three weeks in advance, then of course there might be some uh, agenda issues. Um, so you are you are basically putting uh, developers to work or putting uh, <laughs> stakeholders to work right on time in service now, right? Yeah, this is the main key. Yeah. Yeah. Do it now and rest later. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely so, and uh, obviously there is more stress on the on the timelines because the timelines are so short, right? Uh, and people really have to focus. So, um, uh, what you also usually see at customers, you're upgrading, but people are not dedicated to the upgrade, right? They are also still doing all kinds of other activities. Yeah, and that's that's also why it usually takes longer. Um, so, but yeah, it is definitely possible. Um, yeah, got it. I got just my looking answer. at the, 
week of upgrade activities, one really important thing that I want to highlight is um, do your testing. If it's ATF, instance scan or manual tests, do that before cloning and do that after cloning and do that also before upgrade and do that after upgrading. Okay. Because if you have any issues after the upgrade, um, people will immediately raise something, there's something broken, something works differently, and you can already compare it, like, yeah, but that How was already was the case previously. Uh, yeah, previously, or that was the case because of the clone, and something with the clone wasn't uh, okay. Um, still, perhaps you need to fix it, but you at least know it's not an upgrade issue, and that makes the whole um yeah discussion differently or roadblocks or whatever uh go no goes it, it, it makes the whole story a bit um, uh, different um, so that's a really important thing yeah yeah and just short about after upgrade uh for this customer it was really limited um right we're, we're, we're cloning uh, all the subproduction instances uh, we have a retrospective to to look at all the things that went well and uh, things that we need to improve or learn from and that was uh, about it um perhaps some executives you, you could list like people are talking about um you know having one day or one week of uh, extra uh, awareness alert or um, uh, uh, etc on the on the production instance to be um, sharp on any issues and that you can immediately jump on it. But I think that's uh, that's the, the normal thing. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot more involved with, with after upgrading. But this is, yeah, high level what we did at that customer um, where we performed the upgrade in a week at. Um, so, yeah. Um, so you are sharing yeah. these secrets and, uh, you know, after this video, uh, People will be very happy and they are, you know, following this approach definitely. Because yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. the way you explained is like, you know, uh, we are not doing extra, but whatever we are doing, we are doing it on time and with the, all people together. So this is the main approach here, I guess. And yeah. it will help. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah. One question. Uh, how much time the customer was taking previously? Not this one. This is one week. But uh, previous upgrades, how much time they were taking? And what yeah, was your, their reaction after you did it in one week? Yeah, yeah. actually the previous upgrade um, uh, was reduced to three and a half weeks. Uh, and that was already because we uh, optimized some things. But the upgrade before that, then it was really like four weeks or longer. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, uh, it, it's a huge difference. And maybe I, I didn't tell that but actually for this customer we went from utah to vancouver so we actually also skipped one of the releases and that is always okay. that the upgrade does get a bit bigger because of that um, but still uh, it is it is possible maybe it's not for every customer right because it also really depends on how your company is organized if you have several boards several reviews a uh, huge approval process etc yeah, then it will get a lot more difficult because then you have to do with a lot of politics, which you probably probably can't change. Right. Just look at you can control and just look at the technology, then it is absolutely possible. Also for larger uh, customers. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and then I actually want to yeah, share a bit about in-platform features and actually uh, demo that. Um, that's amazing, because, uh, yeah. Yeah, the clone admin console, that's actually new in Washington, but I do want to to show it uh, because it's a little bit different than um, than we are used to previously. Upgrade center, I'll, I'll show on, uh, on screen. Instance scan, I'll show something about. Um, yeah, ATF, I'm not uh, going to show, um, but yeah. If possible, right, um, have all your test plans documented. Hopefully, all your stakeholders have those test plans written out. So every time we yeah, literally the same uh, test plans can be performed. And ideally, those test plans will be converted to yeah, automated test framework or as much as possible. Because with that, yeah, you can just 
trigger the same test over and over. And um, yeah, it's actually just hit play and, and wait. <laughs> right. um, yeah, and what I also mentioned on the, on the previous slide, right? Then you can also do those tests before a clone, after a clone, before an upgrade, after an upgrade, right? Um, so that really helps. Also on this slide, Cloud Runner. I really would have loved to show that, but unfortunately, Cloud Runner is not available for a personal developer instance. Uh, right, so we yeah. cannot install, install that. And I'm really careful always with uh, using a company instance because, yeah, uh, really quickly you're showing confidential things. Right. Um, so, yeah, we I cannot. Understand. Yeah, so unfortunately, we cannot show Cloud Runner. But Cloud Runner, you know, do uh, investigate it. I, I would say um, it's a free. Um, plugin which you can uh, request from the ServiceNow store um, and then you can actually execute your ATF tests in the mm -hmm. cloud on infrastructure of ServiceNow and you can run two tests at the same time um, you can run oh, more okay. but then you have to pay uh, but you can run two tests at the same time um, and why is that uh, an, an important thing because without this you have to trigger those tests manually yourself. And then um, you have to keep your laptop open. You have to, you have to keep your browser open. Right. Um, uh, because ATF is then using your browser to perform those uh, tests. You don't have to really do anything else at, at, at that moment. So you can just proceed with your normal work. But you do need to have that laptop open. Right. Uh, and, and for this customer, um, the last ATF test took about 16 hours. Okay, so, um, so it's cloud yeah. test, it's cloud yeah. runner, 16 hours? Uh, no, without cloud runner. Okay, so without, okay. Eight, yeah. okay. without um, eight. Okay. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing because then also someone needs to keep that laptop open for 16 Obviously. hours. And if it breaks for whatever reason halfway, someone needs to start it over again. And what we also saw for this customer, yeah, then someone is at 10 o'clock in the evening uh, still uh, at their laptop because ATF is still uh, still running, right? That's that's why Cloud Runner would be uh, a really uh, good thing. Um, yes. So we didn't have that running yet at this customer, but we are going to do that now. <laughs> Great. So, yeah. Um, it's an amazing tip and definitely useful. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, Cloud Runner definitely have a, have a look at it. Yeah, and then I just want to uh, jump into some demos uh, or show some things yeah. on screen. Uh, I think that's um, yeah, I think that's really interesting. So, is uh, is the instance now visible? Yes, it is. Yep. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Um, yeah, this is just a personal developer instance. Uh, so yeah, that we are sure we cannot show any confidential uh, information or something. Uh, I just provisioned it a little bit and I also upgraded this instance so we can uh, can show uh, some uh, some things. Great. Um, so yeah, let's just have a look. Um, the first thing that I mentioned on the on the uh, slides was uh, the clone uh, admin console. Admin console. This is this is new with uh, with Washington. Uh, previously, you would really work from this menu and you would request new clones from here. Uh, but important to know now, this is still here, but like this, request clone, this is going okay. to be deprecated. This is going away. So in the future, you really need to work from the clone admin console. So let's open okay. it. Um, I guess serves now will work on the, on the loading time of it because it does yeah, load a bit too slow, um, but that will definitely improve. Uh, this is the clone admin console. And already the look and feel uh, looks pretty familiar because this is uh, where a lot of parts of ServiceNow are yeah, uh, going uh, to, right? Like the, this, uh, this look and feel, uh, it's more modern using tabs uh, and it's almost everything in one screen. Uh, just the works uh, is uh, is heading. Um, yeah, so this is just one place where you can request the clone. You can see the co configurations, the definitions. So the definitions, okay. uh, the, the clone cleanup scripts, the clone table excludes the the, the preservers. So everything is uh, in this uh, this single uh, 
console. Under the single console, everything is updated. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty nice, and it's just yeah, also the the way search now is is heading right. So, yeah. Let's just uh, go to the request clone because that also looks a little bit uh, different. Uh, also, this one does take a little bit uh, time to load. So, but yeah, definitely search now will be working on this to improve this uh, because this is the first version of the clone admin console. Um, yeah, this just looks a little bit different, but here we already see the, the definitions. Uh, so that's pretty nice to see that up there. And here we've got all the, the settings. Okay. Um, and for viewers, which are really sharp, uh, they immediately see something new now. Uh, and that's this. The on-demand on demand backup. backup. Um, okay. It's not completely new because you can already do that in Vancouver and Utah, but it's not visible. So most people just don't know that this is possible, right? And now ServiceNow actually made it visible. Um, if you are going to use it, it, yeah, that really depends on the on the customer or your situation. Uh, usually, if you would request a system clone then a backup of, for example, the night before is being taken. So you really need to be aware of what is the timestamp of that backup. Okay. Uh, you can find that on the on the support, uh, search now support site. But if you, for whatever reason, can't wait for that backup and you need a backup now, then you can actually just use this feature and you just toggle it. So and that's it, it. it means it will back up whatever the current setting means timeline will be just now right yes indeed okay. yeah because what what actually happens is when you apply this setting when the clone starts actually first the backup is being generated okay. and then the the clone um, is being uh, done um, so something to be aware of and actually that's also mentioned in this um, information message is that this will increase your system clone time because first the backup is being generated and then the clone is being done, of course. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's really good to, good to know. Yeah, and for the rest, um, yeah, we just see the normal um, things here, um, which we already uh, know from the past. Also, maybe uh, an addition on this for for audience which is really sharp and paying attention, we are missing one option here. Um, because for older customers, there is another option, and that's actually to um, preserve uh, users or to exclude users. But actually, uh, in reality, that function has already been deprecated. The, the only thing is that field is still on older instances. So it's now won't delete that. And that field okay. might then also still be on your form layout. So some customers might think that it's some functionality, but actually it's not doing any anything anymore because it's already deprecated. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and this is uh, basically the the clone um, uh, admin console. Um, maybe one thing to extra uh, to mention about um, system clones is Susana also wrote this piece of information. Maybe I should zoom it in a little bit. Um, Parker, not everyone... Can you please uh, talk a bit louder? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So we've now added some extra information here. And actually, this is pretty interesting because not everyone is uh, aware of this. Um, the more clone excluders that you have or the more clone preservers that you have, Mm -hmm. uh, it will actually increase the uh, time uh, system clone takes. Yeah. Um, because what really happens, a full backup is set to your target instance. And then after that backup, things are being deleted. So the more excluders or preservers you have, the longer the, the, yeah, the clone will take. They have to exclude first and then delete. So it will take time, yeah. increase yeah, time. Yeah, time. indeed. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, that will, uh, yeah, that will increase the the total duration. It's something to be aware of. Personally, oh. I do like to have a slim 
and, and small uh, clone uh, without all the extras, uh, which are really specific to the production instance, which totally don't matter for uh, the, the development instance, for example. Uh, but you do have to be aware that, yeah, that will increase the yeah, system clone time. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, let's just switch to the upgrade part. Yeah. Uh, sure. What I showed on the slides was upgrade center. So if you type in, to, in the navigator upgrade center, everything is listed already. Uh, upgrade mm -hmm. plans, I haven't used that yet. Um, but upgrade preview is an interesting one. Upgrade monitor is probably where you spend most time at. Uh, and then we have some extra things, but also this one is pretty nice. Skipped record rules, uh, because okay. this is new from the Vancouver release. Uh, I also recently wrote a, an article on this, uh, because not that many people are aware of this uh, and are using this. And it can be really powerful. Uh, and I'm going to okay. show that in a, in a few minutes. Okay. Um, but first on the upgrade preview. Um, because I did mention, right, the, the most ideal situation would be that you actually upgrade one of your extra instances, uh, subproduction instance uh, or whatever. But not always you have that available then upgrade preview can help you. Okay. Well, it's already loaded. Um, it looks a bit similar like the upgrade monitor, um, but a huge difference is this instance is actually now on uh, Washington patch one and all the newer patches, hotfixes or releases are listed here. Okay. So we can actually select patch two, or there's already something new. Yeah, patch two, hotfix one. And you would hit go, and then mm -hmm. um, uh, in the background, um, information about that new release is being uh, uh, fetched and is being compared with your current instance. So we also see that uh, the, the message here on top. Sometimes it takes a minute, sometimes it takes five minutes. Really depends okay. on the on the size uh, of your uh, instance also. So it basically uh, generates all the issues and everything uh, uh, beforehand, right? Like we have in update sets. Um, yeah, it's um, you do get a lot of information about the issues. Um, mm -hmm. And I hope it's uh, it's viewing in a, it's showing in a few uh, seconds. Okay. Um, but it is the theoretical um, uh, amount of issues uh, or collisions that will be um, uh, occurring. Because what I do see when you really upgrade, the amount is usually uh, a bit higher, uh, but it does give a good indication. Okay. Um, let me refresh this one because it is finished, it said. Um, so it does give a good indication. If if this preview shows uh, 100 skipped records, then you know that it will be close to that and it will definitely not be 500. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, if you do this preview also on a customer instance, um, uh, then, for example, also the duration uh, might be shown here, the expected duration of an uh, update. In this case, this is a, yeah, single PDI, so we don't have that. But now I'm hoping that there are skipped records shown. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Obviously, this is comparing patch one and patch two, so there shouldn't be that many differences. Um, but still, we see this part, part. especially. So uh, this is pretty interesting. So we already see um, what is predicted uh, to be skipped. Uh, and you can also actually dive into this. Um, because we can yeah, click on the link and these are all the records predicted to be skipped. That's pretty, pretty nice. So um, you can already work on this on, or investigate this well ahead of your uh, yeah. real upgrade. Um, that's really interesting. It will reduce um, uh, way a lot of time to upgrade. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, or at least also you know uh, what you can expect and what is coming uh, right. uh, instead of that it is a, a bit of a, a guess. That's really nice. 
Um, I mean, the yeah. only thing you can't do here is really compare the skipped record and the new record. Uh, for that, you really need to um, uh, be on the new um, uh, release. Uh, what you obviously can do is just grab such a record on a personal developer instance, which is already uh, upgraded. Then you can still compare something if you want. But yeah, that's about upgrade uh, center. And then, yeah, the main thing of, of the upgrade preview, I mean, because there's more in the upgrade center. And the main thing that's uh, upgrade monitor. Okay. So let's open that one. And yeah, it's a PDI, so PDI does have a little bit less resources, of course, but yeah, it's it's now slowly coming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this will actually show yeah all the information from the last upgrade performed. Um, in this case, I upgraded to Washington Patch One, uh, but it could also be for co some customers that they just um, applied a patch or a hotfix, then actually that will be shown here. Um, but in this case, yeah, Washington patch one. Um, well, we see the duration, when it started, which release it came from, uh, the, the, the normal information. It looks also a bit similar like a okay, preview. But right. if we slowly, slowly go further, some good links here. Um, that's really, really nice. And here the real skip records. Okay. Um, and this is uh, yeah. This is also a part where you usually spend a lot of time on uh, during upgrading, uh, because hopefully for every release patch and hotfix you will handle every skipped record uh, okay. carefully. Um, but what you show see here, uh, I didn't touch any of the skip records yet. Uh, but still, it says um, that 53 we are reviewed. Uh, but I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then um, uh, there's this thing, which I... Maybe somewhere mentioned. AI is doing anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> no that, that could be. But it's it's no not AI. It's actually what I briefly mentioned. Skip record rules. And this is from the Vancouver release. Okay. So it's really interesting. Um, let me immediately open this to show some, um, yeah, show what it's about. Uh, I've added these five uh, skip record rules to, to this instance. Oh, okay. And these were all executed um, after the upgrade. Um, let me first open the, the first one. Um, because you can actually handle the skipped records, um, okay. but you can do something else also, and that is what's listed here: assign tags to the skipped records. Especially if you are on a at a bigger customer and you're handling uh, the skipped records with multiple teams, then you can assign a tag and you can create a dashboard or whatever. But you can divide the the skipped records this way. Um, and actually, you would just have a, a condition and click click it together. So what you could do, uh, for example, because it's based on a plugin, right? And uh, it's the, I don't know, the HR plugin. Um, okay. Then you would type that in here and um, yeah, assign the tag and that's it. And then every skipped record for HR will be assigned to, uh, yeah, to HR. Okay. Uh, so this so is a, a pretty. It is doing categorization or you know some work yeah. previously Im immediately after the upgrade, even yeah. though we are not checking it. Yeah, indeed, uh, and I'll, I'll show that in a in a in a short moment. Uh, but indeed, that's uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, we have these uh, to assign tags, but actually also to really take action. And what it says here, like hey, keep my modifications, but also like this one. This one is also interesting. Uh, because oh. what I see at most customers at, is that a lot of the out-of-the-box notifications, for example, are being deactivated. Because, yeah, uh, you don't want to run those on the customer instance. But what also happens, a lot of those are being updated with upgrades. So immediately you have a skip record because you de deactivated those notifications. Yeah, you can also choose this action. 
And then it is being referred, but it is being kept inactive because that is what, what the customer wants. Let's um, let's just open this one as example. Um, still loading, I think so. Yeah, yeah, uh, because now the table is showing. Uh, okay, so every skipped record for this table, and this is the, the notifications table, mm -hmm. uh, is being handled. You could just use, um, yeah, any filter, right? And uh, like the plugin that that I, that I showed uh, in the previous example. Uh, but you can also make it a little bit more complex because in this case I actually created a scripting include, and the okay. script include uh, gets every deactivated uh, notification. So we don't have to manually build a list of all the sysids or something. Now we mm -hmm. can also do that dynamically. Um, so you ne also never have to maintain this. Right. Uh, and that's obviously great, right? Because elsewhere, yeah, have to main have to maintain this. We're forgetting it. Um, yeah, we're going to make mistakes, etc. So now all of this is automatically. This this is pretty nice. Yeah, um, it's what I have seen till now, uh, people generally don't use this. And they are doing yeah. all these things manually only via Excel sheet. This is the reality. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, what I'm seeing here, it is uh, totally changing the context. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to dive a bit deeper on, on this because uh, it's really exactly like you're saying. It's um, And I think it, it can save a lot of time. Uh, it brings you a lot of consistency, uh, less of this manual repetitive work, uh, and yeah, less chance of making mistakes because that also happens if you have to do this over and over manually. Right. Yeah, and if I show actually um, what these skipped record rules now really did, if I just open the skipped records. Um, so let's uh, show all of them. Yeah. And the, yeah, the PDI is loading. Yeah, it always depends a bit on the on the PDI, its performance and the resources. But um, yeah, here it is. Um, let me see. Do we have the tax column? Oh, uh, on the right. Yeah, we've got the tax column on the right. Um, in this case, I only had one skipped record rule to assign tags. Um, okay. Um, but already with that one skipped record rule, you see multiple tags here being added already. That's pretty cool. Right. This was automatically done. I I, had, I didn't have to do anything for this. <laughs> That's, That's your rule. Cool. Yeah, indeed. So uh, this is this is really nice. A lot has been automatically tagged. Yeah. Um, the other rules did some things on the resolution and the comments. Because usually you would see not reviewed, but actually right. you already see multiple ones always retain or, or something else. And that's from that skipped record rules. Right. So, yeah, this is already being applied and we actually don't have to look at those, uh, at these, uh, uh, skip the records anymore. Uh, so that's really nice. Um, so yeah, uh, I would say to everyone, dive into this, learn about this, and, and go and apply it because it, um, yeah, it, it good helps. Good at saving automation. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, I think for so far the the the, the skip uh, skip the record rules. There are a few minor things I still want to mention about the upgrade monitor. Um, so let's open it again. Okay. Because there is more on the upgrade monitor than only the skipped records. Uh, it's still loading, I think, because I don't see everything yet. Yeah, it's still, uh, still generating. But let's slowly scroll down. Because what you will see also what kind of activities have been done also uh, with uh, the upgrade. 
uh, for example, uh, schema changes, which fixed skips were applied, etc. And like here, we see the top 10 fixed skips. This okay. is pretty interesting to look at um, because maybe your upgrade is taking a really long time. Then have a look at this because I know for some customers, mm. you're also uh, working with a, a change window of four hours or six hours. So that upgrade needs to fit that window. But yeah, what if your upgrade now takes eight hours? Uh, we need to investigate what can we do. Um, right. And for example, there could be something in these fixed skips. Well, this is a PDI, so we don't see that much here, or only fixed skips of a few seconds. Right. But if you do see a fixed skip, which takes a long time to investigate it, try to find out why is it taking so long, or is it even possible to run that fixed skip before the upgrade? And mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, it is possible. So do investigate that. And it's also a bit the same for the next one, the schema changes. And um, well, I provisioned this instance with a bit of data. And that's also why the schema change for task, for example, took more than one and a half hour. But also for CMDB, it took quite a lot of time. Right. Um, that's just how search now works. But what you still can do, um, have a look at your instance, have a look at your task table, uh, have a look at your database footprint. Is all the data valid? Uh, or do we need to clean up and, and maintain our instance? Because with that, with working on your database footprint, it has a good impact on well, the footprint and possibly. Can, can we see such kind of uh, you know data right, in preview also? Um, this unfortunately not. No, oh, unfortunately, if it not. is, then it will be really helpful, right? Oh, <laughs> like you definitely. said, uh, we can take preventive measures. So yeah. maybe you are going to knowledge suggest something there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm planning to find someone to, to share some ideas, but uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Um, but yeah, uh, but definitely things like this you can reduce because what I did see at the customer we did uh, the upgrade in uh, in one week at um, also the task SLA table took ages for example. Okay. And I was um, looking into that more closely and actually more than seventy percent of all the task SLAs were useless, were ir irrelevant, but they were just being kept indefinitely at that customer. Yeah, what, why not just do something about it? And then that's good for your database footprint. It could, it's good for the performance of the table. It's good for the, the technical depth, but it also is really good for your upgrade. Right. Yeah, and then the, the, the last one, and this is something almost every customer can, can work on. And this okay. yeah, shows yeah, just the, yeah, the plugins and how long it took to install those plugins. And you will see a lot of store applications here. Um, and for example, this customer, 200 of the store applications were outdated. Okay. And some of them were so far outdated that they were forced being upgraded. Um, because in, in most cases, it, it doesn't really matter if you're one or two versions behind. Uh, or minor versions behind. But if you're way behind, then at a certain um, uh, moment in time, there will be a dependency and serve now will force the plugin to, to update. Okay. So um, in that case, uh, there, there may be some issues also, right? When we do force update? Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, definitely, because um, what it also will, will do is the upgrade will get bigger. So you have to test more, you have to validate more. Um, well, in this case, also the duration gets longer, but yeah, the upgrade, upgrade just gets more complex. So you can actually make the upgrade smaller, less complex, uh, a, a shorter duration by keeping your store applications up to date. And then you also don't have to test those separately, et cetera. Um, because most of these plugins, you can already update one week before a month before whatever right. um, keeping those uh, up to date uh, so that's a, a really 
uh, important uh, part I wanted uh, to, to, to mention. So uh, one question, Mark. Uh, these plugins, you know, uh, so these plugins are available in the store, right? So in store, yeah, in store, let's say I want to upgrade, but I am not, uh, uh, let's say I'm in Vancouver, but there is a plugin which is there and it is updated to Washington. So can I still update that plugin to that yeah. version, even though my instance is not? Just yeah, good uh, question. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Uh, yeah, it's um, in most cases uh, the, the the store applications are backwards compatible. It's not always the case, but I think like ninety five percent of the situations they are backwards compatible. So then, indeed, um, uh, you can already get the latest version, uh, even that you are not on on Washington yet. Uh, so okay. in most cases, that's uh, that's possible. For example, like this one, I immediately know oh that's the uh, employee center um yeah and probably this is just uh, one or two versions behind yeah we, why wouldn't we already already update this before the upgrade and then right. we can also test that before the upgrade and it's a really small uh, plugin and etc right um so this is uh, this could be a real time saver because the the customer where we've uh, done the upgrade in a week at the actual upgrade took about eight hours mm -hmm. and if I when I looked at this part one and a half hours was only for outdated store applications okay okay that's yeah that's good amount of time 20 percent of your whole upgrade time that's right that's huge um Do do we have uh, do we have some time for an an extra uh, piece of demo or yes 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 we have time <laughs> enough yeah, time yeah please very um, interesting yeah, session then... and uh, you know me who and whoever is uh, you know looking into will look into this podcast definitely learn a lot and yeah, these I are some so. <laughs> direct insights which is totally based on your cust your your experience at customer level right so yeah. real gold is going on here. <laughs> <laughs> thank nice, you so thank much. you. Um, because then I want to show something about instant scan, but immediately also on uh, on the plugins. Um, because, like I mentioned, um, you know, before cloning, after cloning, before upgrading, after clone uh, upgrading, right. use use ATF, use instant scan, do your testing, etc. In this case. Uh, I usually create a test, sanity test, and that would contain tests like, is the email being processed? Are important users uh, active? Uh, is uh, the table cleaner running, etc.? Those kind of tests. So this is the, the suite, and these are all the tests which are attached to it. Okay. You do need to create these yourself. Or download it from Share or, or read my uh, Search Now uh, community articles <laughs> uh, because these tests are not out of the box. Uh, but you can create them or, yeah, or you can just uh, download a lot of this. Um, but yeah, also something of mid server. Uh, also, it seems, it seems these tests are, you know, very general, right? It Everyone can use this. Yeah. Yeah. You can uh, make them just generic. So in theory, it would run at every customer worldwide. You can also be, make really specific ones because you have a custom application or uh, custom fields or whatever. Well, you can create tests again that, against that. Uh, that's definitely possible. Right. Um, in this case, these are just generic uh, tests. Uh, yeah. Uh, and amongst it is also this, the newer store application version available. Uh, so okay. that is also a, a small bridge to the previous uh, part we, we saw. Right. Um, so I'll show that in a, in a moment. Um, but let's just run this. Uh, execute scan, do a full instant scan, just execute it, and that's it. Now these 79 checks are being executed. Okay. Um, yeah, and 10 seconds, 10 seconds. And it has been executed. That's right. it. If, if, if I would need to do this manually, I cannot do this in 10 seconds. 
<laughs> it's saving a lot of efforts. Yeah, definitely. And uh, a and lot of time, time, but again, also consistency. Uh, or you have to do this manually, so you're going to make mistakes, you're going to forget things, or because you don't have the time, you're going to skip it. Right. Right? Yep. Um, but yeah, 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. 252 52 findings. findings. Um, I know already where that's from because a lot of it is because of those store applications. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's just go to the result. And secondly, if I fix all these findings, I can rerun the test and check how many are left. So this is also a great yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, definitely. You can fix it and then rerun it anytime. You can schedule this if you want every day, multiple times a day. Uh, but you can also just run it manually. Um, yeah, in this case, we already see, oh, this is nice. Some certificates have been expired. Uh, maybe we have to look into that, but anyway. But also a lot of these uh, skipped records, which we didn't handle yet. Um, right. So that's also a good warning for a customer, like, hey, do, do take action. Um, right, so that's really good. Restricted caller access, things like that. But also a lot, yeah newer store application version available. That's interesting. So yes. we can already know way in advance uh, that there are new store applications. Um, so that's a bridge to the to the previous uh, um, part we did in the demo. Um, for store applications, you can also get notified uh, with an email, uh, if you go to the ServiceNow store, you can um, um, fill in uh, details and you, then you would always get an, uh, an email. But now this is actually in the platform. And if this is in the platform, then we can also do something with it. We can automate it. Right. Uh, I'm going to show that in a few seconds, but first opening the check itself. And this is the whole check. Um, not much more, just a lot of text, some explanation, how you can fix it, maybe some documentation, and on the bottom, what is really being done. This table is being checked, Okay. the store application table, and this condition is being applied. And that's it. So okay. simple, uh, uh, some of the checks can be. Some of the right. checks will be way more complicated and will require uh, scripting, but in this case, we can keep it really simple. Right. Um, for people viewing um, uh, yeah, this session, uh, if you are trying to recreate this check yourself, you might think, hey, this is different, it's not available for me. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, all of these operations is is not is anything. Uh, these depend on the type uh, of field. Um, so in this case, is different is not really available. Uh, so if I go to, for example, short description and do version again, um, then we don't see is different anymore. It's not okay. available. But don't let this stop you. Uh, mm -hmm. Be creative because we know that is is different. We know it's a valid operation. So be creative. Think of hey, how can we still get that? Don't let this stop you. Well, in this case, I know on short description we have it, right? Um, so you can, yeah, you can go with like this. And do you see the pop up now? Yep. From S and Utils. Yes. Yes. Uh, so. Yes. I'm using S in Utils because that's for me uh, the quickest. So I can just type in version and I would change short description in uh, what was it? Uh, la latest version, I think. And just wow. hit enter. <laughs> and that's it. Great. <laughs> so amazing. S in Utils. Officially... Uh, so much thanks yeah. to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A real but... application and that's to live. Great. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, definitely. So don't if you if you don't see something like this, don't uh, immediately stop or let this stop you or whatever. It's it's not a roadblock. Uh, be creative, and in this case, I use instant uh, uh, S and Utils, but you can also do this through background script or whatever. 
Um, so be creative, I would, uh, I would say. Right. Um, and then you can have such a, a simple check already. But what I now also did on this instance, because we have this information available, I actually automated this a little bit. All these findings mm -hmm. uh, are now generating a story. Oh. So if we go to the story table, and you could also and get assigned decide... to appropriate team. Indeed, yeah, indeed. Okay. Uh, you could also decide to create an incident or whatever, uh, or you could even decide to automatically um, um, upgrade it or to schedule it. But I just choose to create a story. Yeah. So all these stories, yeah, have just been created um, a few minutes ago. This is all about those stock plugins. Well, everything I'll manually, for the automatically. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Um, immediately, I'll show how I did that, um, and that's also try to be creative, um, because I was just thinking, hey, we have this information in the platform. We can use instance scan. Why can't we use Flow Designer to generate these stories? So the yeah. stories you just saw were all generated by Flow Designer. Great. So now it's opening Workflow Studio. And this is the yeah the last bit of our uh, demo. Okay. I've got here the the Flow newer store application version available. And there it is. Um, oh yeah, this is uh, Washington, of course. So I have to click Edit first. Okay. Yeah, and now we see the details. Yeah. So when a scan finding is being created and it's for this check, um, then this flow is going to run. And what it does is, well, first it gets the information about the store application. And eventually it does create a story. There is a step in between to look up if there is already an existing story, story. active okay. because else we will get duplicate stories <laughs> and right. we don't want that um, so now it really checks hey is there an active story yes or no if that's not the case then we'll create the story but this is the whole flow um, yeah five yeah. steps <laughs> it can be so small and you already saw like yeah when instance scan uh, was run there were scan findings well stories were created um so yeah that's uh also yeah. making life way easier for ourselves uh, we don't have right. to create those stories anymore ourselves we can do all kinds of things with it um, so yeah this is the be creative brainstorm on this and you know uh yeah this is uh, this is really cool you are making life easy for upgrade and uh, that too which is you know happening twice a twice a year and yeah. it is non negotiable <laughs> yeah so, definitely yeah great, that's great so. insights yeah yeah so that's also indeed uh, you know it's uh, you have to upgrade it's simple as that um, once a year hopefully twice a year but do try to do that with yeah with most care uh, and do try to do it really good um, but then also try to look like hey how can we make life for ourselves uh, easier and how can we make this smarter uh, shorter uh, more consistent less manual work etc so um, right. yeah yep. yeah that's a bit about uh, what i wanted to show on screen amazing stuff uh, i think i showed a lot on screen <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah. And then, um, yeah, this is the last bit of what I uh, wanted to share. Uh, it's the top takeaways. Uh, for okay. the so, uh, before uh, we wrap up, uh, uh, I wanted to know more about, you know, uh, database footprints. Uh, can you give a brief idea about that? Yeah. Um, yeah, brief. Oh, that's difficult. <laughs> I think that would be a whole uh, any example session. like where you did or used it and uh, you get amazing you know finding findings uh, so something yeah. like that yeah yeah database footprint it's um, uh, usually 
Or may, most customers don't have that much attention for the database footprint. Uh, when they do have attention for it, it, it's mostly when you're in over licensing, because if a database uh, is getting more than four terabytes, you're going to pay addition, additional costs. And that's for okay. your production instance, but also for your subproduction instances. Okay. okay. Um, and usually at that moment, people are going to look at the database footprint and then uh, on the ServiceNow support side, you can also request an overview of the top 100 tables and their size. And then usually you would see tables like the sys attachments, the sys audit, the sys audit delete, things like that. Those will be the, the, the top tables. Um, so they will archive yeah, those of, tables or what? Uh, archive tables? No, no, means you said like uh, sys attachment and all these tables. Oh, yeah. So what will happen when we apply uh, database footprint from that? Like what value yeah. we are getting when we apply yeah. that? Yeah, you really need to investigate it. But um, for sys audit, for example, mm -hmm. uh, no, for sys audit delete, um, you can actually clean that up. Um, depends a bit on your uh, your company, but it's re perfectly fine if you clean sys audit delete up uh, after two years. Okay. Uh, and actually, uh, we did that in the past for this customer also. Uh, and the sys audit delete was like uh, more than two terabytes. And now it's like 50 gigabytes. That's okay. a huge difference. Yes. Um, but what is difficult is sometimes the politics behind it. Because if you say sys audit delete, some people will immediately scream and it's audit and it's regulations and whatever. Compliance issues. No, and... no it's, it's not audit. Sys audit delete is the undelete functionality in ServiceNow. But you're not going to undelete things after two years. Right. Uh, I would even argue, are you going to undelete things after six months? Rarely. I don't think so. <laughs> so if we uh, add a table cleaner uh, for two years, then we are perfectly safe. Uh, but that can already save a lot on your database footprint. And it's the same for Sys audit. Uh, where you can work on or your email table or your attachment table, and that will help uh, a lot. Uh, I did also write uh, a lot of articles on that subject um, because also as example, uh, the sys attachment table is usually really big at customers. Mm -hmm. But a good chunk of the attachments is not valid because they are orphaned. They don't have a valid parent record anymore. And that happens already because of some out of the box things, but also because sometimes there are just some issues because there was uh, for uh, a while an issue with predictive intelligence. And that would cause hundreds of gigabytes um, of orphaned uh, attachments. So attachments which were just useless, but they are eating up your, um, yeah. Uh, your 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 space your your your, your database the database is, is growing it's getting slower uh, and eventually you're in over licensing also um, so yeah uh, I can talk way more on database footprint but it's uh, uh, yeah that's a huge uh, subject by by itself yeah um, but yeah for me I do want to say like uh, Actually, working on the database footprint should already happen at implementations uh, at customers. Um, but usually, that's not the case. And uh, that's actively being worked on the database footprint when it's already a bit too late. Um, so yeah, uh, it's just how it, how it works. Uh, because I also know from experience, when I was doing implementations, the implementations were always about doing an MVP implementation, a eh, minimal viable product, and doing it in just six weeks or nine weeks. And then we would, yeah, we would already have implemented a new instance and some processors. Right. Um, yeah, then there's no time to work on something like that. And the customer is also not really paying you for that, right? Um, so yeah, then there's no attention for that. But like now for this customer also, I've worked on the database footprint for almost half a year. Okay. Uh, but if I would do have to do the same when implementing it, then it would have taken me three weeks. 
maybe. Right. Yeah, now it took me half a year. Um, but yeah, uh, that's just also how it is, how the reality is. Uh, most of the times the customers are triggered by the over licensing. Um, yeah, uh, that's great, just great. Uh, how it is. Great, great. Uh, so, Mark, you know, yeah. it has been an amazing one and a half hour, I guess, you know. And on behalf of all Samuel Now community, I'll thank you for all such brilliant things you have shown till now. And uh, amazing demo addition to addition of creativity that I learned. <laughs> that is amazing thing. And definitely I'm going to use it. And whoever is listening will definitely use it. Once again, uh, I thank you so much for joining and showing all this amazing stuff to us. You are making life easy for all people. Great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity also, but also nice to hear. Uh, and immediately also the recognition of what you can do. And uh, and yeah, uh, that's that's why I also just want to share things like this. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you also for this opportunity. Great, great. Yeah. Thank you.